So let's go all the way back to the beginning of understanding what a parameter is and what relevance it has to parabolas. Okay, so where did we begin? We began with this idea of the locus of a parabola being to do with a point and a line. Simple, simple idea, right? So for example, with your classic parabola, we'd say S, which is the focus, right, the focal point, we'd put it at 0, comma A, right? And again, for the classic parabola, where would you put the directrix? Y, y equals A, A, right? So once you've got this and you push it into, once you push it into the distance, the perpendicular distance formula, and the two-point distance formula, okay, out pops this guy, um, x squared equals 4. A y, where A is that focal length there, right? The distance, the shortest distance between um, the parabola at any given point and both of these, okay? And that distance happens at the vertex, right? At the origin. So, picture is worth a thousand words, right? So let's just do a quick sketch here. Okay. So we have our focus, we have our directory. This is great, right? But we decided to move past this. We wanted to understand this, not just in Cartesian terms, but in terms of a parameter. What's a parameter again? Who can give me a like one sentence definition of the parameter? Anyone? Yeah. One that you use to determine. Yes, okay, let's, let's start off. It started so well, and then it sort of fizzled from there, didn't it? Um, the parameter is this extra variable, a third variable, right? Because I've already got two. I've already got two. Okay. And the third variable, which we tend to use the letter T, that's a bad color to choose. That T is what's really driving the X and the Y, right? You remember the analogy I gave you was um, a corner shop at the beach and it's selling sunscreen and it's selling ice creams. And those two quantities seem to be linked as one rises, so does the other, right? But really, they're not so much linked to each other as they are linked to this third variable, right? Which in my example is temperature. As the temperature rises, people are going to buy more sunscreen. They're also going to buy more ice cream. But the fact that they do both of those is more of a coincidence. It's, it's about the third thing, okay? So therefore, we introduced these guys. We introduced these parametric equations, right? Linking each of the two variables we're used to talking to, to the third variable, right? For our classic parabola, what are our definitions for x and y? 2AT. 2AT, bless you, and AT squared, very good. Which therefore implies all of those, bless you, all those points on the parabola, right? If you pick a point like P, okay, its coordinates will be in this form, in this form, right? So T is like any general parameter you like. You can say that to be any way you want. If I wanted to pick a particular point, I might make the parameter equal to lowercase p for that point, capital case, capital case, uppercase p. Okay. All right, now. We've went there, you saw that I can eliminate the parameter by putting these two together by substitution and I'll come back to my original Cartesian equation, right? We saw all of that, the algebra was nice, but what was the point? What is T? What does it represent? It's not temperature. What does it actually refer to in this situation? In this situation? Yeah, does anyone remember? It was an actual value. Oh! Like on the unit circle, you remember? The other, yeah, okay, good. So just in case you're not there, right? The example I gave you that you already know is the unit circle, right? And on the unit circle, we're already used to using a parameter and it refers to the angle formed at the origin between the positive x-axis and whatever radius it is that goes to your point, right? So theta, that parameter, is an angle, okay? T, this parameter, is not an angle, there's no real angle here. It refers to the gradient oh my God, of whatever it. tangent you've got there. Is it literally tan theta? Uh, not, well, kind of, depending on what you refer to as theta, right? I'm just going to let, I mean, you could you could say that um, if you but want theta to be here. Right? Say it again. And it's actually t values. 
Uh, kind, kind of, yeah, kind of. That's not mainly why we do it. That's sort of more coincidental, but yeah. If you if you introduce a theater in here, right? But you don't have to. Is my point. So that's why I'm not actually. I'm not going to bring Tane into it. At least not yet. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So so what is what is T or in this case P, right? It's the gradient of the tangent at that point on the parabola, right? So for instance, if I say, where is t equal to zero? Okay, now just pause. You can put it in. You can put in all of that into the coordinates and you'll get a very, very easy point out. But you don't need to think about it in terms of chucking the values in there. You can think about it in terms of, well, where is the gradient of the tangent? That's what t is, right? When is that equal to zero? What does zero mean as a gradient? Vertex, horizontal line. It means a horizontal line which takes place at the vertex, right? Which is why when you put t equals zero in here, you get zero, zero, which of course is the vertex. Yeah, that's where the gradient is zero, okay? All right, we then extended that idea. We said, okay, if I've got a point over here and a point over here, I'll call that Q, right? For the sake of convenience, I'm going to label its coordinates as, rather than 2AP AP squared, 2AQ, AQ, AQ, AQ squared, right? Because we're being very imaginative there, right? I can use those two, those two points, and I can find out, for example, the equation of the line that the interval that joins them, right? And because it's the interval that joins two points on a curved thing, we call it a chord. chord. Very good, right? So we said, I'll go up here, we said the equation of the chord, and we actually derived this. It's been a while, so I'll be very impressed if anyone remembers. It starts with y equals, okay, I'm going to start with that on two, right? P plus Q, now pause, 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 pause. What, what is this? Half P plus Q. It's the average of the two gradients of these, that's terrible, sorry, of the two gradients of the two tangents, right? That's the average, x. So to get the gradient of this chord, I average the gradients of the two tangents, right? And then what do I have hanging on the end here? Minus, Minus APQ. Ben. I don't even remember doing okay. this. So that's all right. That's why we're reviewing it, yeah? Okay. So there's your equation of chord. But this was just dipping our toe.